bear the burden of these harms like a lot of other like marginalized identities and that unless we center these folks and their needs we're not going to achieve our goals um so again like bringing the margins to the center um so that's what i heard and i think it can be hard for people to see that but i also it's really cool if you look at these badass organizations they're often led by badass like black queer folks <laughs> because they get it and like have that intersectionality and that deeper understanding and are able to bring these various perspectives to this like liberation work. Um, and then Sarah, were you saying Jara? Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say Jara was saying some cool stuff in the chat. Jara, did you want to, did you want to share with the class? Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to unmute. No, I was just dittoing Gayla's comment about having a um, kind of intergenerational connection to the land as a descendant of enslaved folks. I think a lot of people can relate to that. My grandma grew up on a massive farm. Um, her family still owns a lot of that land to this day. Um, and her father had sharecroppers that worked on his land. And just the stories even she tells about having um, their hog house and just the way that they would maintain their livestock and their crops and stuff like I think that's a legacy that a lot of descendants of enslaved folks can relate to and even just on the whole intersectional tip a lot of us have been also like our land has been stolen and we've been deprived of land that our families have worked on for generations and wealth that was produced um and so even just like piling on the interse intersectionality of it all even more about just how um land can also be wealth for communities and there have been people communities who have been historically um, deprived of land, uh, both through reparations and things of that nature, um, but also through redlining, gentrification, as well as a continuation of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for your, you know, adding, um, for your addition. Um, because now that we keep talking about like gentrification, just like I'm not, are, are folks familiar with what happened with um, what happened in People's Town? That's a city in Atlanta as far as like flooding and whatnot. Can y'all leave like in the chat or like a, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, so Nadia speaks for you all, democracy. Um, Nadia said, not aware. So I'm just going to give like a brief overview of the fact that I want to say, wow, I forget the timeline, but some years back, uh, there was, there's flooding in people, uh, there's flooding in largely historically Black neighborhoods, but, but specifically we're going to talk about people sound. People's Town is a historically Black neighborhood that is in the Turner Field, Turner Field Stadium area. So that area was experiencing um, flooding. And the city of Atlanta's response to that flooding was to push about 20 or so people out of their homes, um, basically displace those people somewhere else so that way they could redevelop on that land. Um, However, what is left out of the narrative is the fact that it was not necessary to leave, to push those people out of their homes. Um, and like the city of Atlanta knew that. <laughs> so basically, and I bring that up because engineers that work around this issue of flooding, there are engineers dedicated to these things, um, basically did the landscaping of that area and was like, there were solutions to fixing the flooding in that area without pushing people out of their homes. Um, so the majority of those residents that the city of Atlanta has pushed out has, um, wow, it was great uh, hearing from you, Valerie. Um, I'll reach out soon. Um, but yeah, thanks for being on the call. Um, but yeah, so this is, um, so where was I? Uh, I was somewhere. Yeah, so pushing people out of their homes, they didn't need to, and now there's only a select few amount of people still in their homes. And people, and they're fighting back against uh, eminent domain. I am not the housing scholar, but I believe eminent domain is essentially when a city or a municipality tries to take land for it to be 
I believe like a public good or something like that. Uh, Y'all are nodding, so we're going to go with that. <laughs> um, but eminent domain. Kayla, may I add in? Go if you on. don't mind. Yep, go. Uh, yep. <laughs> so just a little bit of context. Yes, eminent domain is essentially um, the authority of any governmental body. So that could be as local down to your um, city council, mayor's office, and go as high up all the way to federal level. But essentially... Um, it's the right of the government, especially, I mean, it's typically used um, as like measures of national security, which is something just in the policy world is known to be very vague. Um, and people can do a lot of bull crap in the name of national security, which is kind of harder to identify, um, but also just anything that's just largely defined as the public good. And so even when we're looking at um, the People's Town displacement, that was Mayor Kasim Reed, who was using eminent domain due to the flooding, but even to take a, take a step back, right? There was flooding within People's Town because of Turner Field, which was first developed in the middle of a low-income neighborhood to bring in the Olympics, which really um, triggered all of the gentrification we have seen that has taken place in Atlanta for decades. So we're starting with the initial displacement of uh, black folks and other people of color within people's town for the Olympics to come in. And then because of all of the um, pavement that was laid, there's less room for like, and this may not be the accurate term, but like rain runoff, which led to flooding. So because they put in parking lots and all of this pavement in areas that usually had grass that could soak up all the rain, there then began to be flooding in people's neighborhoods. And because the city already had um, a goal to develop lands, they use that as reasoning and justification. So it's like even then a compounded element of displacement being connected to um, economic security and development. Wow, I appreciate you giving all of that historical and uh, urban planning background because I know of it, but not all of it. <laughs> um, but I mainly bring all of this up because flooding is an environmental issue. Like the fact that um, there's not enough storm drains in black and brown neighborhoods and the fact that water is just kind of just like going everywhere and it's like, oh, whatever. Like the fact that it's not a priority for black and brown neighborhoods in a ways in ways that it would be a priority in a affluent neighborhood. Um, is a big factor in environmental justice. Um, and so I just brought that up also because like engineers were basically like, hey, you don't have to push people out of their homes to fix this flooding issue. And the city was like, I suddenly cannot hear a thing. So like, I just wanted to uplift that um, because I'm thinking about the abortion bans and how there were literally hundreds of thousands of people um, mobilizing against the abortion bans and then people were like what do you mean Georgia's conservative no one everyone is anti-choice and I'm just like uh I don't think that's the truth <laughs> um so like I just raise all these things because there's so much intersection however because things aren't named as specific in a movement it's it may not always be connected if that makes sense um, um ooh, julian you graduated from north carolina a t shout out to you um <laughs> um but cool 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 um but of course i want to open the floor if anyone else has like because it's after eight so like I can go ahead and close out if folks don't have like questions or comments or anything. Okay, so I hear a silence. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that as a yes, Gayla, please close this. Well, before I do that, I wanna offer the floor to our <laughs> presenters. Like before I say last things, like is there anything y'all wanted to say? Just to thank people for joining on this night and during this strange time. Really appreciate having so many people um, come on and to recognize so many names and to see new faces. It's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, thank you guys.
Yeah, ditto. Um, please take care of yourself. Um, there's a lot of work um, in Atlanta to um, help folks um, who may be impacted by, I mean, everyone's impacted by this pandemic, but who may be disproportionately impacted if you, you know, if you've lost your job, income, um, you know, whatever, because of um, the situation, um, please like email me. My um, email is agbo at sparkrj.org and I can get you connected with some folks who are doing this work. Yeah. Um, and then in this follow-up email, Agbo, I'm really glad you said that because like you just reminded me to send a, when I send the follow-up email, I need to put in the information about like the different resources, whether that be unemployment, whether it be you need some food, whether your baby needs some Similac, I don't know. We can get that for you. Um, but yeah, that will be in the follow-up email. Um, yeah, so some of the persons that I've seen at the PSC, I really appreciate everything that you have shared here. <gasps> Nikki, you brought up the PSC. I'm so glad. Well, I'm, I don't know how to feel because I don't like the PSC, but anyway, that's a separate thing for another day <laughs> um, because we have to close out because I don't want to take up all y'all's time. Um, but I really, I put, uh, I put the form back in the chat and it will also be in the follow-up email because I really, we really, really, really want you guys to take this form so that way we can be listening to our folks' needs. We can be listening to what folks want to learn more about um, and just really be responsive to what, to needs and desires or even suggestions. If you like, y'all, we should do this. I'm down for it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, 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 see you later, Lauren. But yeah, so I think I'm officially closing this. <laughs> um, Y'all be safe. I will follow up with an email. Um, and yeah, y'all have a good time. Enjoy. If you're above Thanks, age, get some wine. I don't know. <laughs> Enjoy have a good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Do, do, do. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm.